with Iran. Deal or no deal, do you expect in the coming days in Geneva, the U.S. and its other friends to reach this interim deal with Iran that would sort of freeze its nuclear program? Well, Wolf, the truth is we don't know. Uh, when we left Geneva uh, almost a couple of weeks ago, the uh, negotiating side that we're on, what we call the P5 plus one, the permanent members of the UN Security Council, plus Germany, were all agreed on a very solid text of an agreement. The Iranians had studied it, they'd worked with us, they had uh, come close, but at the end of the day, they couldn't accept it. So everybody went back to their capitals to consult and consider. When we reconvene in Geneva over the next couple of days, we'll see where the, the Iranians are. But the deal on the table, uh, Wolf, is a good one. It's a good one for the United States for the following reasons. First of all, we are deeply committed, and you've heard the president repeatedly reaffirm, that we are not going to allow Iran to acquire a nuclear weapon. So how do we best accomplish that? Well, we've applied massive international and national sanctions over the course of several years that have brought Iran to the negotiating table. They are, their economy is vastly weakened. They are prepared now, perhaps, to make the kind of accommodations that they haven't to date. This deal, if it were agreed, would halt all the progress in Iran's nuclear program and roll it back in key respects over a six-month initial period. At the same time, the international community would have unprecedented access to Iran's nuclear facilities and full transparency into what they're doing. So they wouldn't have the ability to sneak out or break out. Everything they do would be monitored as it would be rolled back at the same time. This would be an initial step for six months designed to buy time and space for a comprehensive negotiation right. towards a final deal. And that final deal would ensure that Iran cannot have a nuclear weapon. During this interim agreement phase, the, the key sensitive issue, the, the one that uh, obviously the Israeli government and, and other friends of the U.S. in the region, whether the Saudis or the United Arab Emirates, are, they don't like the fact that the U.S. And, and other international partners would ease sanctions on the Iranians. Explain what you have in mind as far as easing these ongoing sanctions in this interim period. Well, I'm glad you asked. First of all, Wolf, many of the numbers you've heard are wildly inflated. Nobody's talking about 40 or $50 billion in sanctions relief. We're not even talking about at all loosening the sanctions architecture. The oil sanctions, the financial sanctions that have been so effective in straining the Iranian economy would all remain in place. What we're talking about is some very limited, modest, and reversible uh, economic access to actually Iranian resources that are frozen overseas in very small quantities relative to what they are How losing How much money are we talking month. about? We're talking about a modest amount of money, a fraction of the number that you've heard out there. Ten billion, twenty billion? Less. Five billion? I'm not going to get specific, Wolf. This is still an ongoing negotiation. But the, the fact of the matter is these inflated numbers that you've heard uh, are really uh, not accurate. We asked uh, our viewers to send us some suggested questions on Twitter. I know you're active on Twitter. Here's one that came in from Joshua Carney. I don't think he's related to the White House press secretary. How can the U.S. save face in Israel and maintain a dialogue with Iran at the same time? It's a good question, and I want to play a clip from Prime Minister Netanyahu, who says this interim deal, at least the way he's understood it, is pretty bad. Listen to Netanyahu. Iran is practically giving away nothing. It's making a minor concession, which they can reverse in weeks, and you endanger the whole sanctions regime that took years to make. So I don't think it's a good deal. I think it's a, it's a bad deal. All right, so what do, you, what do you say in reaction to what he's saying? Well, first of all, it's not a bad deal. If you recall, uh, and it is a good deal, if you recall when Prime Minister Netanyahu went to the United Nations General Assembly last year, he put up a chart it showed a bomb, and it showed a line across the bomb, which was the quantity then of Iran's uh, highly enriched uranium. Uh, and he was very concerned that in a little while that line would get to the point which he described as breakout. Well, Wolf, under this deal, that line would come very far down, and the quantity available to Iran would be much reduced. So even by his own standards, uh, that is uh, a substantial uh, part of, of any good deal. But the other thing that needs to be understood is that we're not doing anything to undo the sanctions architecture. The relief that the Iranians would get if this deal happened is, as I said, limited, modest, temporary, and reversible. And it, they will still be losing 
billions of dollars every month because uh, of the sanctions that will remain in place and be fully enforced. So what they lose every month of this six-month period will far exceed what they may 